Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake. We're in our busy season. Uh, today, we're talking about City Skylines 2. Now, this is the follow up to the absolutely friggin' monumental City Skylines, one of the best city builders to ever do it, in my opinion. Uh, SimCity really stumbled and fell after EA messed up with that whole thing, and Cities was there to pick up the ball and run with it. That game is awesome. I haven't mentioned it in videos much here, but I'm a big fan of City Builders, and I've casually played a lot of the first game. I'd have bouts like every year or so where I'd download it again and get hooked and dump hours and hours into it. Now, I, while I'm not filling the game to the brim with mods or anything like getting ultra hardcore, I just love playing it. City Skylines has been really, really well supported for years, and I, I can't speak to the console version, but the PC version has had a bunch of updates, a metric ton of DLCs and add-ons and game changers, and then the modder scene take it even further and made the game even more in-depth and incredible. So now here, just setting the stage, City Skylines Lines 2 kind of wipes the slate clean, I guess, starting with a new, more in-depth and presumably adaptable foundation to once again, hopefully, live on in the hearts and minds of city builders for years to come. Now, we've been playing a review copy, although we didn't get our hands on it as early as some places, so this is just first impressions. Uh, I've worked my way through one big city build, and it's very clear to me that the game achieves a lot, but it's just out way too early. I'm gonna address this up front because it's gonna be all the comments and a lot of the conversation around the game. I mean, look at this video on screen here. City Skylines 2 does not look great. This isn't my machine. This is across the board, the experience for most people, you know, to varying degrees because everybody's machine is different, but City Skylines 2 feels extremely undercooked and not optimized. I had everything at medium and low, just in the hopes of kind of getting 30 frames per second. No matter what I did, the game looked pretty ugly and ran poorly. I bring this up not because I'm like a frame rate counter or like a pixel counter or anything tech heavy, I'm not Digital Foundry, but this does here severely affect the experience. The enjoyment factor is lessened because the game just isn't very smooth most of the time and is harsh on the eyes. Yeah, after a while, you can get it barely acceptable running, but even then, the bigger your city gets, by nature, the problem will grow. And, you know, even when you zoom in, there's not a lot of granular detail and there's a lot of weird bugs and glitches. You'll occasionally just get a weird build where things clip through each other. Sometimes the terraforming looks a little weird. Cars will just clip through each other. Sometimes I've seen a couple of them go through buildings and go through roads. I think it's upsetting that they put the game out this early because it didn't need to be this way. I love City Skylines, but I think, and maybe most of the community as well, would have patiently waited as long as it would have taken for the game to be released in an acceptable state. Especially with the amount of other games out right now, like begging for your time, that feel way more polished and finished, uh, it's rough. Now, uh, having said that, the base of the game is mostly great technical stuff aside. It's got some nice refinements, improvements, and additions that feels like it's trying to bring cities to the next level. Like, right off the bat, you can tell, you can feel, City Skylines 2 is big. Like, it just feels way more massive. Like, you just feel like you have a much larger palette in front of you. There are like a ton of tiles, many of which have annoying elevation you need to tweak with the finicky terraforming system seemingly everywhere, uh, but you can very quickly just start buying up tons of tiles and expanding your land, and, and the game encourages it. It's not unrealistic now to have suburbs like really far away from a city, or maybe like a, a bunch of farms way out in the country, way out in like a corner of your map, and it's cool. You can get 
pretty wide pretty quickly thanks to some really great feeling building tools. Like first of all, uh, electricity is pretty simple and you're not as bogged down in plopping power lines everywhere. It's, it's one of the few parts of the game that actually goes more hands off instead of more hands on, but it works. But thankfully, if you're like a power nerd, you can get more granular in the actual power management, less about just running lines and getting caught up in that. Now the road system is great. It's super quick and easy to create massive grids, long curvy roads, complicated intersections, roundabouts, everything, all in seconds. The tools don't feel finicky. They're just as precise and as flexible as they should feel, and they adapt easily. The game also makes it really easy to fix your work, like make your roads bigger even, or add stuff to them in a pinch. Changing a road later on isn't much of a headache as it used to be. Like, it can still be tricky, but little things they do just make it easier where it matters. Like say you have an intersection and it's causing a bunch of traffic jams, so you wanna add a roundabout or a traffic circle instead to kind of free things up. The game very easily lets you just click and drop it right in and the game will automatically rezone or delete or, or you know, bulldoze certain things around it. But to see the game, like the roads, the sidewalks, everything adapt to that roundabout and the game also not completely destroy everything around it as you plop it down, it just feels thoughtfully integrated and just really well done. Smaller things, the game has seasons, which is pretty nice to see in action. I like it way more than the day-night cycle, which you can turn off. It seems way too dark in this game in particular. I, I had a hard time playing and building and doing things at night. But speaking of seasons, while the little visual changes are nice, the game does seem to lack a bit of the granular fun stuff it used to have in terms of detail. Like you don't really see people doing as much fires and stuff like that. You used to have like fire trucks pull up and like all this stuff going on. Now the, a truck will just pull up to a fire, like one fire truck, and then it'll just sit there for a bit. And then eventually the fire disappears. Like that stuff seemingly is not there yet. Uh, there's also not really any like decorative props I could find other than vegetation. Which, well, like while the game has a lot of transit and other civic options like mailbox drops and bus stops, you don't have a lot of control over like the more superfluous details on the streets, the, the fun decorative stuff that doesn't matter, but I, I still think some people will want that. Where the detail is in is with the district tool. Now you can create designated areas that only get certain types of service and you can enact certain policies just for these sections. It's for efficiency, really. Ba basically, instead of everything you do or enact that blankets the entire city, here you can just section it up a little bit. Then you can also click a created district and get at a glance information about just that certain area so you can keep things a little organized. Plus, I just like when you zoom out and you can see all of your districts named kind of like uh, neighborhoods on Google Maps. And uh, speaking of these districts, you can now do specialized industries that have strategic placement, kind of like something like civilization, like in a Civ game. You can plant a farm, but you're gonna wanna plant it specifically where the land is fertile, or you're gonna wanna build a lumber mill where there's a large cluster of trees or a quarry near uh, like a bunch of stones on the map, stuff like that. You can actually drag and draw lines to create farmlands, and it's fun to get creative and like work around the resources you're given. Uh, and this all ties into your economy, which has a lot you'd expect, like you know managing taxes and public spending, getting loans and paying them, all that boring stuff. But something about it all doesn't seem as super in depth as it could be. Graphs and and breakdowns like for public spending are, are simple, and I'd like to see it broken down into more of what's going on. I understand there's a balance that the developers have to do because this stuff can get boring and it can get lost in the weeds, but some of it seems a little vague, a little too vague. And that comes into issue when things get complex with your build and like problems crop up. And sometimes it's hard to identify what exactly the issue is because of like this lack of information or the way it's displayed. Now, uh, a progression overhaul is pretty cool. I, I dig it here. It's different. Maybe some hard Core fans may not like this, but I like working towards stuff. So you don't just progress through population increasing, you gain XP by doing stuff and leveling up. The XP is gained through like, you know, population growth, of course, but also increasing citizens' happiness and just doing things like building and adding good things. 
And as you level up, your city goes from little thing to small town to busy town to eventually a big city. And as you level up these ranks, you unlock access to doing more. And this is how the game kind of eases you in and doesn't overwhelm you with options right at the start. You're also uh, earning skill points to then spend on basically a skill tree that unlocks stuff for each category. Like say in the transportation category, you can unlock an airport or in the hospital, you can then unlock specialists or road maintenance depots for roads and st stuff like that. Now, these are things that aren't essential to have unlocked right away, but then are fairly easy to unlock at about the time you'd probably be needing it or wanting it, at least in my experience. It could dry up for people at certain points pacing wise, but so far I like the way it's paced. It could slow down, but uh, along with this, extensions for buildings are nice and easy. Like click a special building and then there's an easy bit of options to spend money and expand operations capacities, abilities, like a bus depot for mass transit. You have a bus depot, right? Are you running out of buses? Uh, add some garages to the side of the depot to get more buses. Having trouble getting some far off citizens to the hospital in an emergency? Add a helipad or an intensive care wing or something like that to your hospital. Some of these will take up more space, like more land, but it's worth it. There's a lot of detail to it. And it, it's pretty satisfying because it's usually a visual change as well as a tangible, beneficial one. Now, what helped me realize just how good some of these updates and additions and cleanups are, uh, it, it's actually pretty fun now to go back and, and fix or update stuff. The game does a really good job of just going with the flow, like fixing stuff on the fly or down the line, like further on, is actually fun. It's not aggravating or as tedious. There's still stuff here and there. You're always gonna fiddle with certain things. It's a city builder, but the flexibility of this game and just throwing stuff at it and it keeping going and being somewhat forgiving makes it fun to play. So the way it all goes down, because these are just first impressions, it's hard to judge how it'll all really flow into high level play. Like I'm talking like 60 hours into a build. Will the game collapse? Will it still feel fun? I think probably, but I don't know. I do think however it's paced, even if there are some issues or my issues, just like with some problems not being super clear, it doesn't matter too much right now. What matters is that I think the game needs more time in the oven. It's got a lot of great stuff figured out, but technically wise, I think it's still released in a pretty unacceptable state. And I hate this because one, the game deserves better, but also two, hopefully a year from now, it makes this video like completely out of date. This stuff is bad, but at least the foundation seems solid. But for now, I would wait. Is it easy to recommend waiting, even if the launch was solid? Because, you know, the developers will probably be adding DLC and modders will take control of it. Yeah, sure, but in the technical state, that's the biggest reason for a wait right now. That being said, it seems like it's gonna be a good game down the line, but as of right now, it's kind of annoying. So this is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. What are you thinking about City Skylines? Do you love the first game as much as I do? Did you play it casually like me, or did you mod the hell out of it? Are you somewhere in between? Let's talk, and let's talk what you're thinking with this new game. Are you gonna wait? Are you patient with the updates? Is it running better on your machine? Let's talk about any of this stuff down in the comments. If this helped you at all though, clicking the like button helps us out. We'd appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell. But either way, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.